Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with my lovely wife. Maureen Anderson. And we're excited about talking about grace again today. Yeah. We're actually coming from <laughs> this book, Maximize Grace, mm -hmm. and your book, Yeah, God's, uh, God's Grace, yes. Fuel My Passion. Yes. And uh, Jesse Duplantis said that it was uh, the best book he's ever read on grace. And so there's the book, the workbook. You can go to uh, uh, do a Bible study with it or a devotional with it, uh, with the workbook and the wor the book. But we're going um, through the book, not all the way, but we, we are we're covering, covering a little what bit we of each can. chapter. Yeah. Covering a little bit of each so chapter. And Jesse read... never said anything about my book. But he didn't read it. No, he didn't right. get it. Okay, that's but right. anyway, just letting you know that uh, you can go to our YouTube and listen to all the teachings on this and and uh, so the YouTube is Dr. C. Thomas Anderson. And when you go there, and I'll say it again, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, like, subscribe, and share. But you can also go to the Word for Winners and see what our ministry is all about. We're excited about today. I'm going to be teaching from my book, God's Grace Fuels My Passion. And we're on chapter 8 of this book. And it's really talking this chapter about that we go from blessing to blessing in the New Covenant. And that in the How new covenant, yes, and in the new covenant, it is it shows us that uh, in the old covenant it was of the natural, and so it was a covenant they wanted to they wanted the law they wanted that with God and and he made a covenant with man there, but it was based on if they do everything right they get blessed and if they didn't they'll be under a curse. Well, <laughs> the law was given that was to show them. They can't keep it. They're imperfect beings. Was we have the original sin from Adam, right? The law limited them to the natural. Natural realm. And so, but it also was given to show them they needed a Messiah. They yes. needed a Christ. And the new covenant, and Paul is talking about this now in Galatians chapter 4. He's talking about that, uh, that there's two covenant, and that the covenant of grace, the new covenant, and and that's the gospel of grace, and there's yes. only one gospel, it's the gospel of grace. He was saying that it is of the supernatural, it is what Christ has done, it is of the unseen, and so it is not of the natural, it is of the supernatural. Right. That's so. really important, that's what I was just saying. The okay. law put us into the limitations that are part of the natural yeah. system. But grace puts us into the power of the supernatural. And then we have to understand when Adam fell, he gave his responsibility to the enemy. That's what he did. And so now so now we have Authority. an original sin of Adam that can't go away unless we get born again. Right. And receive Christ That's Jesus the as our Lord yes. Savior. And uh and then also we have to realize that that under the law, the power of sin is uh, is is the law, That's and right. so and Satan is a legalist. That's, That's when right. he stepped into the legalistic role because he knew he couldn't we, we couldn't keep it we couldn't keep it because we have because of Adam's sin we couldn't keep it. We needed a redeemer, and exactly so we right. need this. If you stand to the law, your gold bond stamps, but <laughs> gold bond stamps are worthless until they're redeemed. redeemed. And once we're redeemed. <laughs> well, no, that's a funny example. Okay, anyway. I like it. I like it. Okay, okay Galatians 4, 23, 24 says this. Ishmael, and so he's revealing the two covenants here. Ishmael, the son of the slave woman, that's Hagar, uh, was a child of the natural realm. But Isaac, the son of the free woman, that's Sarah, uh, was born was born supernaturally by the Spirit, the child of there's, promise there's, of God. There it is again. There it is. So one, he's showing that, and it goes on to say, these two women are, uh, and their sons express an allegory and become a symbol of two covenants. So he's trying to show Separate them. Separate them. And you know the Old Testament is full of pictures. All pictures. And to help us to see into the unseen of the new covenant. And so God's constantly having pictures that have have a, a symbol there, an allegory to help us to see what the new covenant with Christ will look like and be. And so we see this. And so the old covenant makes us sin conscious uh, because we're because we're looking at ourselves right. and and into the natural. 
and uh, and but the new covenant makes us Christ conscious, so we're keeping our eyes on Jesus. Uh, Hebrews twelve two says, "Fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith." So when I keep my eyes on the Word, Jesus is the Word that I step into the the power of the Word that contains faith, and it's the author. It's the beginner. Um, author means beginner. Starter he of my it. faith, and he's given me a measure of faith. But I, when I keep my eyes on the word, the word is full of faith, That's and right. that faith is now activated in me to accomplish something to do. But it's him. Faith it's, that works the it's, dead. It's him doing it through me. Theory, As I talked Jesus, the other right. day that uh, we're the branch; he's the vine. I can do nothing on my own. A branch is. There's nothing that That's can right. produce in that without the life going through the vine. And so I'm one with him, and his life flows through me. It produces the leaves. It produces the fruit. But it's him that is doing it through me. It's not me doing it. And so that's so important for us to understand. And so uh, so it's real important to understand that God says, have, have faith in me. Have faith, have faith, have God like faith. Have the faith, faith of God. God. How important is so, that to be understood? Yeah, so, so sometimes we get so into our own works of trying to develop faith. Not that we shouldn't, but that we have to surrender and bind us to ourselves to the faith of God, to the faith that Christ has given us, and let that word now grow, grow faith in us to, to come into the faith that God has already given yeah, us. Yeah, he empowered the Word to develop the kind of God-type faith in us that has the ability to change our tomorrows. Our own faith can do things here on earth, but no. they cannot do the supernatural. No. They can't change the natural. Only supernatural can change the natural. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's true. And Romans uh, 5, yeah, 2 it, says get this. It, get it. Through whom... We have gained access by faith into this grace. So what gets us into the life of the new covenant of grace, uh, the gospel of grace, right, is faith. But it gives us access to this. And that means, to me, it means like by faith, as I'm uh, connecting to the faith of God, to faith of the word, and meditating on it, receiving it, shouting it, believing it, visualizing it, those are the meditations we do. We shout, we speak, we see, uh, and we rejoice in it, and, and we allow that image to happen in us that that faith now opens the door to grace, right? to the supernatural power of the Word. Yeah, I that, love the that Scripture, but I like verse 1 that says we are justified. Sometimes that's left out. And so the reason that we can operate in the faith and the grace is because when we get born again, God has justified us before himself, fully qualified for the promises of God, which is grace. It is grace. They're all, he did it all. And he so, did a complete work. He said, it is finished. It's complete. Yes. And so he's on the Sabbath day. If I'm rest, justified, if yes, I'm justified, we, I'm qualified. Yes. Yeah. So I enter into there the rest of that. The, Galatians uh, 5, 6 says that faith is working through love. So now I say, okay, I have a choice to do here. I have the unconditional love of God. I have the mercies of God that yes. triumph over judgment and that I am, I am called to love his creation. Maybe, of course, not behaviors if they're wrong, but, I, but you know, we love the person. We love his creation. And it says, and I have a decision to walk in uh, uh, forgiveness and mercy Amen. and choose to love with God's love uh, everyone. And I have his love. The Bible says so because it says that the hope of God, so God's hope is the beginning of faith, really, right. never will disappoint me. And because the love of God was shed abroad in my heart. So it is covers my heart. It's already done by who? By the Holy Spirit. So I have his unconditional love, and I can choose to Hope. now in the new covenant live in his love that he gave me, and it's there. My love is conditional. And so 
Hope has substance. It does. That's oh, what's yeah. important to understand. Yeah, yes. it does hope have substance. substance. And God's hope. Amen. And it won't disappoint nope, me. No, never disappoint It you. won't fail. That's exactly right. Yeah, and so Galatians 5, 6 out of this translation I thought was really uh, neat. It says, all that matters now is living in the faith that is activated. Remember I say faith is an action. Faith without works is dead. So faith of God is an action. So it's activated and brought to perfection by love. So how does my faith get activated? By the choice of living in God's love, it will activate the faith of God. Believing the truth and love, because God is truth and love. So when you believe the words he spoke, that's yeah. truth. Yeah. And love empowers. So both the word yeah, has power right. in it and love has power in yeah. it because it is who God is, the essence of truth and love. Yes, and now this is That's so why we speak truth oh, in yeah. love. Oh my gosh, that is so true. And so... If I'm not seeing the Word of God working for me, the promises, and yes. I'm claiming I'm seeing, I'm meditating on them, but they're not happening, then I need to examine my heart. Well, the Holy Spirit, asking the Holy Spirit, what's the problem? Is there judgment in, in me? Uh, do I have offense towards somebody? Am I not walking in the love of God? And the Holy Spirit will show you what the situation, you know, we need to take out of us, of course, the Holy Spirit does that, and we have to agree with it to go. The, the, the wrong images that are in our subconscious that are contrary to the Word of God, which we believed before we even got saved, even after we got saved, they're, they're not right. Absolutely. But, but they won't let the Word work in our life until we get wrong or the wrong image. You know, the Bible tells us that in, uh, in 1 Timothy 20, 21. I'm meditating on that right now is that, you know, there's good things and bad things in the house. That's paraphrase. If I get rid of the bad things, I'm fit for the master's use. In the Bible, so that means that I let the Holy Spirit reveal to me what are bad images in me, in my subconscious, that I get rid of those so that I'm fit to produce the Word of God in my life. You know, there's another scripture in, in um, let me see, it's 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. It says that God's Word is God breathed to us. It's profitable to teach us, to correct us. Uh-oh, correct. Whoa. Rebuke us. Uh-oh, rebuke. And train us in righteousness. So the Word That's is the there again. Truth. Again, so that I'm fit for the, yes. the, the fulfillment of the Word. So I have to allow the Holy Spirit to get rid of wrong images in me. I don't go looking. But if things aren't working, I can certainly ask the Holy Spirit. He's right there with the gifts of the Spirit in me to reveal to me what's stopping it from working. That's exactly right. That's okay, great. so God great. is love, and we're learning to walk in the love of God. And that's unconditional love, by the way. Oh, it's yeah, totally. not based yes. on if, when, or because. or It's based on unconditional because you exist. That's it. Doesn't mean we need to love anyone's behavior. No. Don't have to hang out with people that got bad behavior. No. But we have a responsibility to love God's creation. And you know, the, the, uh, it tells us in Matthew 10, 8, he's saying this about the power that's in us, the resurrection power when we get born again. And then we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. You know, we need to get, get that baptism of the Holy Spirit that releases the gifts in us. He says, you'll heal the sick, you'll cleanse the lepers, you'll raise the dead, uh, you'll cast out demons. Freely you have received, you will freely be giving what you have now received in your own life, the freedoms you have. You know, the Bible tells us that the testimonies of Jesus and it is a spirit of prophecy in our life. And, you know, God gave me a revelation of that spirit of of Jesus. Uh, the testimonies of Jesus, that what Jesus has ever testified to me, the revelations Jesus has given to me, the things that he has said, or he set me free of. Those These are, are right images those again, are by the way. Those are testimonies of Jesus in my life. I, they're prophetic. I can give them away. And so that helps me. I mean, when God gives me certain things. And you're reading a, that scripture to something that comes to mind, is okay. there could be people out there right now that, yes, the pastor can pray for me. Yes, the pastor yeah. can move in this. And yes, the gifts yeah. are for the yeah. leaders of the church. Well, that, there's, a, there's some truth in that. But also, 
you as an individual are empowered by the faith of God and the blood of Jesus that all of these things are available to you yes. as an individual. When you feel this is what grace has done for you. It has qualified you to be able to operate in the power of God. In the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It isn't somebody yeah. else. And, and the enemy loves to come in and say, yeah. well, you didn't do this and right, and you didn't do this right, and didn't do this right, and didn't go here right. And, yeah. and so that brings condemnation, but the Bible says there's no condemnation in Christ no. Jesus. So he, you have to get a different yeah. image of what grace of God versus the Old Testament and New Testament, the truth and love, the power of God has become available to you 24-7 based on what Jesus did, not based on what you do. Amen. That's the truth. I don't know how to say that any better. Yeah. And also, you're I qualified. just sense that God is setting somebody free today, that you're watching and you have had sadness on your life. Mm. And uh, you feel like you want to cry. You don't know why. And God wants to heal you right now. It's a hormonal thing in your life. And so right now... I just re I just see that Thank that you. hormonal situation Indeed. Indeed. come into balance. I see that that sadness that uh, Power of the living God yeah be gone Jesus in Jesus name, name in your life and that feeling of just wanting to cry and you don't even know why you feel that way. I see that gone in Jesus name. All sadness has to leave and I just see that God right now in grace gives you joy unspeakable and full of glory. That the fruit of the Spirit is love, His love, and His joy. And so you have His joy. And so just receive that. And just allow yourself now to enter into the laughter of God. Because laughter is of God. Isaac, the new covenant, means laughter. And God laughs at the devil. So just start laughing right now. And we see that power off of your life that's of the enemy and it has to go in jesus name i pray amen i want to go on and talk to you about as we were right. talking about the love of god it says this in colossians 4 6 of grace but let let every word you speak be be drenched in grace and so it means every word should be drenched in grace. Well, you think about that. What does that mean? What Christ has done. I have a friend that when I start to talk about something, she always brings the grace of God. She always says, I say, oh yeah, this and that. And she'll go, oh yeah, our latter years are better than our former. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, you're, oh yeah, I'm blessed of God. Okay, yeah, that's, oh, all good, all things work together for good. And so she's constantly encouraging me as I'm talking. Yes, and I love it yes. because she has that excitement of it too. And the Bible tells us, and that is, uh, I think it's first, might be Second Thessalonians uh, 2, 16 and 17 says about the grace of God and says that God has given us. And grace is eternal encouragement, one translation says. Eternal encouragement. And sometimes... Things on the outside are not are, are not working. They're just right. not working. You've been praying, but they all they look negative. But the power of grace is on you, and though they look that way, you're 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 encouraged. You know things are going to be fine, and it's just sometimes you can't understand that. And but it, grace encourages your heart. That's what it says, and and gives you God hope. And it strengthens yes. you for every good word and every good deed. And uh, we've had those times happen to us where, where it looks like nothing's working. But yet we're, we're in grace. We're, we're not discouraged. We're encouraged. And so we say, oh, good. well, this doesn't make sense. And then we go, we're in the grace of God. Hey, Amen. I, I, I had this thought this morning. Yeah. I've got to think it through a whole lot further probably. But it says, you know, even David said this in, in Psalms, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, right? Yeah. Okay, so it's interesting that not only is grace something that we accept that's always present, ever present in our walk in Christ, but the word that says goodness or grace and mercy, just think about it. It follows. It. The goodness of God yeah. is right behind us. I kind of thought of it like, I drop my clothes on the floor yeah. and I walk away, but you pick them up, <laughs> put them in the laundry and wash them. God has to repair 
our past continually. Surely <laughs> Grace, up to, Grace and, up everything. He's, a, he's, turning, oh, he, he's turning every bad it, thing it, into it, good. He's turning more, it into it, good. It's more than that. Yeah, it is. You leave dirty spoons out. Oh, no, leave, it's yes. a spoon. But I'm yeah. saving spoons. Why should I use I can use it again. That's, no, no, no. It doesn't matter. If you, so I have to keep picking up. I could use it all I follow week. after you. And you're right. Yes. And I love it, but okay, I like that. It's that grace. You're lending grace. me grace, grace, goodness, and mercy. I is don't following say anything. Me all the days of my it's life. It's like just be happy. <laughs> He's a guy. Hey, man. Okay, but anyway, but um, I just want to talk about this too. You know, the Bible says this, and that's in Proverbs 3, I think it's 3, uh, 5, and 6. It's uh, right there, and it says that. Trust in the Lord with all, all your, your heart. heart. Lean not to your own understanding. That's the audible word I got from but, God. But in all your ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct your path. And so sometimes we are problem solvers of our life, and we've done that all our life, and we get born again, and now now we're trusting still and our ability to solve problems. Sometimes we, we know the word so well, so we can say, oh, I know what to do here, and I know what to do there. But yet, the, yeah, we haven't asked the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And we need to always let trust God, trust that what God's given us uh, to give us the right answer, yeah. to give us a solution. And I have found that when I stop, you know, because I was a problem solver, when I stop and say, no, 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 Holy Spirit, What's the answer? what is the answer? Yeah. It, 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 isn't, it isn't what I came up with. It's altogether different that he's giving me, but it's the right answer. And so I really want to encourage you. And what I saw in this was like a uh, you know, mother carrying a baby. That baby is 100% dependent on the mother. And for the well, blood, well, the, it's the, in the oxygen, room, 100 everything, the, the feed being staying alive, everything is total dependence on the mother. Oxygen and the uh, blood, yes. everything. So we have to see that I am totally in Christ Jesus. I'm in him. I'm covered in him. When God looks at me, he sees Jesus. That's what the word says. And I want to be covered in him. He is in me, but I am in him. And so my total dependency has to be on him. Amen. And uh, not on me, but on him. And, you know, sometimes, you know, people have said, we laugh when we talk about it today, that, you know, the accomplishments in your life, they have said about you, the rumor gets out there, is that you're just a great leader. You've done it by, uh, what do they call it? Secular leadership. And, and we had to laugh today because that is so far from the truth. Yeah, I mean, exactly. from the time starting in the little house and we had a vision from God, but every decision we would make you know, we Took fasting would, and prayer and the Holy Ghost. And, but we would pray Always. and we would do what uh, Kenneth Hagin said. We would check in and see what our inner witness said and so which direction to go. And so we were constantly depending on the Word, the Holy Spirit, the vision God given us, and uh, and fasting and prayer if we had to. We couldn't get rid of the mouth. Exactly right. So in, in this church and everything we've done has, was accomplished by the Holy Spirit not by us. And so uh, so we laughed at, you know, how people will uh, Well, if I, did it, if I did it by leadership skills, they should still hire me so I can teach them leadership. I mean, yeah, a, but you did, but you were laughing this I was morning. laughing about it. You yeah. were saying how far from the truth that is. How far is, is the truth? It That's was right. by the Spirit of God and our prayers and, and being led by the inner witness of the Holy Spirit and the visions and finding out what God wanted every step of the way. Absolutely. So just really wanting, it was by grace. Yep. It was by grace that our accomplishments have happened in our life. I, and I hope and believe it is that. It's not us, but it's Christ that lives in us. Anything we accomplish, we believe Done it the, was Christ in us that did by it. By the power. Yes. Of the and anointing. you know, we yeah. had Dr. Cho's book on the, and, uh, but we use those we avenues from of learning so from many. them. Dr. Yes. Earl Roberts, and yeah, Kenneth Hagen, and uh, Hagen, we learned Copeland, Copeland all, all of them. All we, stuff. yeah, Charles Cap. Yep. We used all of those ways of their mentorship in our life, and the fourth dimension. You know, we use that. Great book. Yeah. So, so all of these things. Absolutely. Anyway, we we need to. We pray. need. To, yeah, you need to. Uh, was there something? Okay. Some, you want to pray for someone? 
Uh, you, oh, you did already. Yes, I did. But we should pray for you out there. If there are areas of not understanding the absolutely awesomeness of grace and how it works. Now, don't forget that grace teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion. It's in Titus chapter 2. But please understand that you have to walk in the place of loving unconditional, which is grace. We Amen. lend grace to those around us, to our family, mm -hmm. to our mate, to our spouse, to our children. We have to have a sense of grace. We don't have to, we have to love the person, we don't have to love the behavior. No. That's important. So Lord, I just pray in the name of Jesus for anyone out there that's not grasping, we ask for the revelation of grace to come to their hearts with understanding in the spiritual realm, though the natural comprehension's not there, but we are able to understand grace by faith in Amen. what Jesus said Amen. and what Jesus did. did. Amen. And for you, if you don't have never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive Him right now, change your destiny, not by becoming religious, but this is the opportunity to Amen. get born again and Amen. get started on the wonderful Amen. journey in the goodness of our God. Just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my, my sins. sins. I ask you, dear Jesus, Jesus come into come my into life. My Be my Lord, Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' Jesus name, name, Amen. Remember, what is it like, share, and subscribe? I, I got that right. YouTube. Yeah, you did oh, on YouTube, good. Dr. Right. C. Thomas Anderson. But I also encourage you to go to the Word for Winners. Uh, and uh, and if you were blessed today by the teaching, uh, we have a trip, a missionary trip to go on, and we do so many great things in the kingdom of God. Uh, we we would we would love it if you would financially give into this ministry to help us on the things that God has called us to do. If you got benefit from the teaching, we uh, just pray about it or just give us a blessing that will help us get the word out. We want to get churches and we want people to get free of law and religion and come into the new covenant of grace and come into the life that Jesus provided for them and blessings. But it takes finances to do that. So take the word of grace and truth to the nations. My we need help. And when we go, you go with us. And when we teach, you are there. You are there. You get the credit. So God bless you. We love you. Have a great day. God bless you. God bless you. Are you ready to see more of the grace of God in your life? In the workbook, God's Grace Fuels My Passion, Dr. Maureen Anderson goes into an in-depth study of the life of grace and what that means. The law binds you, but grace brings you freedom. This book paints a picture of what grace truly is. Through personal testimonies, this is a life-changing revelation that God wants for you. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.